know, for me, M. Night Shyamalan will always be two directors. He'll always be the brilliant director who directed The Sixth Sense, which is a pretty good movie, even if you know the twist ending, and Unbreakable, which I feel is one of the most underrated films of all time. And then there's the other M. Night Shyamalan. The M. Night Shyamalan who directed The Village and Lady in the Water and The Happening. I don't like that M. Night Shyamalan very much. So where does the movie Signs fit in? Well, it's not quite as good as The Sixth Sense or Unbreakable, but it's not quite as bad as The Happening or The Village or Lady in the Water. It's kind of in the middle. Shyamalan's talent as a filmmaker is evident in most every frame of this motion picture, but at the same time it possesses a number of hideous defects that make an otherwise enjoyable film seem somewhat stupid. How many defects, you ask? Well, let's say... ten. Number ten. Mel Gibson can't clean up dog pee. I know that when it comes to petty and trifling complaints, this one is up there. But this has just always bothered the hell out of me. The dog pees on the floor, and Mel Gibson takes a wad of paper towels, dabs up the pee a little bit, and walks away with the mess still there. Look how much pee there still is on the floor. I know this doesn't seem like a big deal, and really it's not, but it's probably a bigger deal than you think. It really does detract from the reality of a film when people notice stuff like this. Number 9, The Terrible Title Screen. Here's the opening title for Signs. Now here's something that I put together in five minutes. Does anyone here really notice a significant difference between those two things? Number eight, the crop circles are dull. I don't know if you guys remember the advertising for this movie, but it was kind of sold to us as the crop circle movie. Yet these don't look like crop circles, they look like crap circles. I mean, compare this from the film to this, a photo of an actual crop circle. Number seven, the baby monitor is the only thing that picks up the alien's communications. Stop! There's two of them talking. in this movie are always watching the news, and no one on the news is talking about any alien signals being broadcast. So, obviously, no one in the government or no private citizen has discovered these broadcasts, but Mel Gibson and his family discover the broadcast on a baby monitor. Later on in the movie, they even use the baby monitor to check and see if it's safe to go outside. It's good enough for me. Me too. Number six, I don't buy these two as brothers. Mel Gibson is 18 years older than Joaquin Phoenix. 18 years. That's the age of an adult. That is their separation by age. But you know what? That really doesn't matter. And of course there are brothers that are 18 years apart. So that doesn't really matter that much. What really bothers me though is that these two really don't have much chemistry. It's time for an ass whooping. This is not an intelligent way to approach this. Number five, the aliens look lame. I mean, don't get me wrong, this isn't a terrible design for an alien, but compare this alien to the alien from Aliens, or the alien from Predator. The lack of imagination put into these creatures is kind of underwhelming. Number four, stupid humans. A big problem with this movie is that all the performances are understated. Everyone seems like they're at a funeral 24 hours a day. Dad's going to burn these again. It's contaminated. You don't even know what that word means. No one seems to ever be happy or sad or angry or anything. Everyone just seems blasé, non-stop. What's wrong? I don't hear my children. Well, why should you hear them? They never make any noise. Not only do the understated performances of the actors make the characters come across as somewhat boring, but they all come across
across as fairly stupid. Mel Gibson knows that there are aliens about, and he knows that they've been to his farm, yet he decides that he's going to go investigate some strange noises by himself in a cornfield with no weapons whatsoever. That is stupid. Another stupid character trait of these human beings is that even amidst the invasion, they never seem to understand that they should probably arm themselves with something. In one scene in the movie, they have an axe wedged up against the door to keep the aliens out. They decide to go out and investigate and see if the aliens are still around. If you were Joaquin Phoenix in this scene, going up the stairs to check and see if the aliens are still around, wouldn't you take the axe with you? Of course you would! You would have to be an absolute fucking moron not to take the axe with you. But he doesn't take the axe. He walks up the stairs completely unarmed. There is no human being alive on this planet so stupid that they would leave the axe downstairs while they were going up there to check and see if there were still aliens trying to kill them upstairs. And by the way, does this movie take place in an alternate dimension where people don't have guns? No one in this entire movie ever thinks to use guns against these aliens. It's never even suggested. Not even once does anyone say, Hey, some aliens are coming. Let's go get a shotgun. Let's go get a rifle. Let's go get a pistol. Why the fuck not? At one point in the movie, Mel Gibson slices through an alien's fingers like they were butter with a simple kitchen knife. If a knife will go through them, then a bullet will go through them. So just shoot the motherfuckers. Number three, stupider aliens. As stupid as the human beings are in this movie, they don't hold a candle to the stupidity and incompetence of these bungling aliens. We're talking about an alien species that has mastered interstellar travel has mastered cloaking technology for their ships, and yet they can't get past a simple wooden door? I could get past that fucking door and kill that family if I really wanted to. Anyone could do it. Why are these aliens naked? They're just walking around naked, without any sort of weapons, trying to conquer the Earth. What sense does that make? They would last about 15 seconds. Number two, nothing is a coincidence. Mel Gibson's little boy has asthma. And his little girl has this weird obsessive compulsive habit of taking a few sips out of a drink of water and then setting the glass down somewhere around her. You take a glass of water and you finish it. Now what's wrong with this one? It has dust in it. This one? A hair. This one? Morgan took a sip and it has his amoebas in it. Joaquin Phoenix's character played minor league baseball, where he had the home run record and the strikeout record, because he always believed in swinging the bat as hard as he could. Merrill here has more strikeouts than any two players. You really got the strikeout record? Felt wrong not to swing. Will all of these seemingly unrelated character traits come into play by the end of the movie? Why, yes they will, in the most absurd way possible. You see, before Mel Gibson's wife died, she told him this. You tell Meryl to swing away. So he tells Joaquin Phoenix, swing away. Meryl, swing away. And Joaquin Phoenix does. The alien stumbles back, hits a dresser, and a glass of water falls onto his shoulder. It's then that we realize that water is poison to the aliens. The alien tries to poison Mel Gibson's little boy, but none of the poison gets in because his little boy has asthma and his lungs were closed at the time. His lungs were closed. No poison got in. No poison got in. I have two big problems with this. One, it's just a stupid way to tie things together. And two, if his wife had some sort of prophetic moment just before she died, why was it that all she could say was, Swing away! 
Why couldn't she just say, hey, aliens are going to invade. Water is their only weakness. Good luck. You know, something actually useful. Number one. Water? Are you fucking kidding me? Water. The aliens' only weakness, aside from kitchen knives, I guess, is water. Water. The most abundant resource on the planet Earth. There are so many things wrong with this. Number one, what about humidity? There's water in the air. Shouldn't the air therefore kill these fucking aliens? Number two, why would these aliens come conquer a planet made almost entirely of fucking water? That would be like if you and I decided to go conquer a lava planet. Hey guys, want to go conquer a planet made of lava? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And hey, let's not only conquer a planet made of lava, let's do it naked. Woo! Commence Operation Resounding Failure. Did these aliens go to the Invader Zim School of Planetary Conquest? I mean, these have got to be the dumbest fucking aliens in all of existence.